Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahol, the Second Swing Golf, joined today by Michael Geiger here at the Tour Van in Minnetonka. And today, it's more of a fitting-oriented video, Michael, because we're talking about lie angle. And yep. we've got Ping G430 iron heads here to test. And the reason we're using Ping is because of their lie angle color code chart, which yep. I know our fitters use day in and day out. And instead of just saying minus one, minus two, or, or two degrees flat, two degrees upright, um, what Ping does is they have it color coded, and so we've got our fitting heads here. I've got the G430 blue, mm -hmm. um, which the blue is one degree upright, and you've got the black one, which is standard. And of course, all these other colors um, correspond with a different lie angle setting. So um, today we just want to show and see what the differences are. I mean, if we, we're going to test a few of the different lie angles that Ping has to offer in their fitting pack, and we're going to see what happens. But I know it's a huge component that our fitters always talk about in every fitting: driver, iron wedge, etc. The lie angle matters quite a bit. It's huge. I think it's probably something that flies under the radar for a lot of golfers, yeah. especially if they've never been fit before. Mm -hmm. You know, lie angle is just something that's, you know, you sort of just grab a club off the rack and, and just play it as is. But the lie angle, especially, you know, as, as you look at the, the ping chart, your height, your wrist to floor uh, distance, there's all kinds of factors that that go into determining kind of the dispersion of your shots. Yeah. And uh, there's probably a lot of kind of hidden gains that are that can be found in the lie angle that really you can find by working with a second swing fitter. Right. Yeah, I know there's there's a rule that the fitters use. It's usually about three to five yards per degree on the dispersion, right? So if you're, for example, if you're a, a standard player, black on um, the color code, and you're missing consistently five to 10 yards right of your target, then maybe you might need to go upright a degree or two in your lie angle and suddenly you'll be right at your target. And so um, the way the, the fitting chart works is that's kind of, the, the, the fitters use that sort of statically as a starting point for the fitting, right? So you're, as you mentioned, the height, the wrist to floor measurements kind of dictate where things start. And then dynamically, which is kind of the part we're gonna do today, is testing the lie angles to see right. maybe where you might fit. I mean, maybe now in your next fitting, you'll have a place, hey, well, I tested these different lie angles and this is where I wanna start here because this is where it was best for me. So. Um, today we're going to do four different um, lie angle setting tests. We're going to start with the black, which is standard. We're going to go up right up to two degrees in the green dot. Then we're also going to reverse and go to the red dot, which is one degree flat. We'll hit five shots with each, and we're just going to see what those differences are. I mean, uh, some, sometimes for a lot of people it doesn't really make a whole lot of difference, but I think for a lot of people also you'll see a big difference in that. Yeah, situation. it'll be fun to watch. Ready to get started here? Let's do it. All right. Pretty Frankenstein type build here for you with an X100 shaft for Michael. He's got some speed and the G430 head, so you're gonna see some distance here too. <laughs> and there's some speed. <laughs> now, if this is a perfect test, you'll have a little oval like right in the middle with the black right. dot, and then we'll get a little bit left, and then we'll finish right of this original one but we'll see we'll see how perfect that is theory you know, it's will, not going to be yeah that's a theory that's a hypothesis theory will only take you so far <laughs> Ooh, that one tail a little got right. out ahead of that one. Oh yeah good Okay. Okay. So we've got our five. And I think what we'll do is we'll take the best four out of five. Sure. And so I think here, actually, if we, well, it depends. I'll let you pick one, pick the one, Michael, because there's, these are the five shots. And then kind of, we've got, this one is the lowest smash factor. This one, second lowest smash factor, but it's farthest right. So, or excuse um, me, that's not right. This is the farthest right one. It's actually uh, the highest smash though. I would probably take that one out. Okay. I think I think that was the outlier in terms of face okay. angle. Yeah, totally. Okay, so now I'm gonna switch you to the blue dot here, which is one degree upright. We'll see if there's any difference there. I mean, Might theory, straighten me out. In theory, should move a little bit left. All right. So, do you notice anything, Michael? Do you, do you see the lie angle change there? Because I think that's part of the reason you you mentioned that it kind of flies under the radar. I think part of that is just people sometimes don't actually see it in front of them sure i mean it's if you're looking for it you you, you see it a little bit but yeah. i mean one degree it's not not massive as mm -hmm. you as you'd think yeah 
I think what, when we will see it is when we're at two, we're at the green yes. dot, and then we switch to the red dot. I think I think you'll see something at that point. Yeah, definitely. Okay. See, I don't expect your fade to go away or anything. Here. No. That won't, you know, you still play that fade. Yeah. I think it would just be more, what we'd look for is a kind of a slow shift of your yep. shots just ever so slightly to the left. Right. A little more speed on that one, huh? There you go. These are two pretty darn good golf shots. They're right next to each other out there. <laughs> Ooh, that one started left. Okay. Okay. That's, I think, the highest ball speed today. Tailing a tad over there. Hmm. All right, so a slight miss on that last shot, but Let's see here, we uh, take out this guy over here and we've got our sort of dispersion circles between black top, which is, this is why this is confusing with TrackMan's default colors here, but we've got the white oval is the black dot and the orange oval is the blue dot. So slightly did move things over left. We saw that with kind of your your farthest right shot here that we're, we've got in the data set, about 15 yards right of the center line. We've got this one over here. We went further left than any black dot mm -hmm. swing. And so now we can move up to the green dot, which again, if things ring true here, even a slightly push further left again here. So right. we'll see. Okay, there's a the start. Similar golf shot. Okay, slight miss there maybe? Yes. Looks like perhaps a little bit high on the face. That one looked like it was, yeah, pretty square. Pretty good. Oh wow, yep. So here's our <laughs> blue oval for the green dot. And actually one thing I wanted to look at here too, a couple of things really. Um, notice how the face angle average is moving closer to zero, which so in that, if you look at this face angle number, farther right is a higher number. Mm -hmm farther left is a lower number. And if you get negative, you know, under 0.0, .0 that means the face is slightly close. So your face is getting closer to neutral as you get farther upright here, Michael. Um, yeah, those two that were pretty much the straightest shots of the day so far with the blue, or excuse me, the green dot. Yeah. Um, and then you had a couple out here to start. We took one of those out and then actually you had a slight miss, but this was still a really good shot and straight at your target there too. So um, I think, now this is going to be interesting and I'm going to have to get your feedback on things because we're going to go to the red dot here and the red dot goes from, well, this is now we're at two degrees upright. This is back now to one flat. So I'm sh I imagine you'll see a difference when you put this one down versus that one. So Michael, you put that one down, you can tell a difference. Yeah. My hands feel, <laughs> I feel like you got to go Bradley. Yeah. It's, <laughs> no, that's uh, that is something. Yeah. So I, I, I kind of am urging you just for the sake of the test to swing as normal as you can and set up as normal as you can, but it, I'm sure you, it's yeah, hard not it's gotta to be, it's gotta feel different. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of to be expected there. Yeah. Granted that was probably, you know, further right than I think any of your shots today. I mean, I hit it okay. It's yeah, just, no, you hit it. That's just the, one for one smash is nothing bad at all. That's, you know, that is something. That one was better. A little more squared up that time. Yep. Still, it did fade a little bit though. That's interesting. I mean, you see this pretty, pretty square face, and still ten yards of fade. Yep. 
it's kind of a, it's, there's really two ways the lie angle can affect you. If you slice it a lot, you know, a more upright lie angle will correct that mm -hmm. and also close the face. So there's, it helps in both ways, right? right? Cause a slice is only exaggerated by an open face. So, oh, wow. I saw where that hit the screen. <laughs> yeah. That was that reaction you heard from me was I just watched where the ball hit the projector screen and it was yeah. quite a bit right that than anything I've seen today. Oh, it felt like it was almost off the hosel. That one was hit well. Sure, you don't probably love, I mean, I know you like to hit the fade, so in that sense, you probably like <laughs> how it's fading, but it's, yeah, it's just a little bit right. It's probably not that speed. much. Okay. You want to keep that one? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we've got our, how about this? How about a red line and dots for the red dot? For the, there we we've go. We've got it to work out eventually here. So um, let's see here. We've got, first of all, we've got to take out, I think we're taking out this, uh, this one over here. So, so Michael, could you, you could definitely tell as you were kind of the progression, mm -hmm. especially after the. You went from green dot to red dot. You could just feel it and see it at a dress, right? Definitely. You, yeah. you just, you feel that you just have to work so much harder to square the face. The red, it, it feels, for me at least, impossible to, to, to square it, no matter how yeah. square you, you, you try to close the face. It just can't stop leaking right. And the more upright I got, the less you have to work to yeah. square it, as you'd expect it. It's closing quicker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, and, and again, this is a, a very amateur fitting, if you will, like uh, if you were to come in for a tour van iron fitting, you would get some of this in the lie angle testing, but you, it would be more comprehensive. And in terms of testing iron heads and shafts and things, there's a lot more into it, but this is purely a lie angle test here and a lie angle adjustment. But I think we can conclude, Michael, that you belong at least in some sort of upright lie angle setting. Mm -hmm. um, could be two, could be one, depending on the shaft or the club. Yeah. But I think upright is probably what suits you. Certainly not flat. Um, no. we went flat and the way you kind of deliver the club is kind of already open already. And then if we exaggerate that with a flat setting, that only makes it a little bit worse. But, um, the other thing too, we need to look at is that sort of face angle, right? <laughs> Where we kind of saw things progress, you know, as I had mentioned before, a higher number is more open. So 2.8 in the flat setting. And then we get downwards to the black dot, blue dot, green dot. And we're also, we're getting closer to neutral altogether. Mm -hmm. So this is, yeah, it's a good look at what, why lie angle matters. Um, it's not, lie angle is not going to magically fix everything about your slice or your hook, but it's a tool that helps sort of move things correctly if it's fit right for you. Yeah, and, and I think if you're a, a decent player, you can, you can work with maybe a degree off or so, but I tell you what, as someone who probably should be one up, when you get two down, like when I'm one flat, you see yeah. what a wrong fitting can do mm -hmm. for you. So it's just more reason to talk to a, a second swing master fitter. Um, if you're kind of a specialty case, you could be, you know, shave a couple strokes off your handicap yeah. in, in an hour. Right. I mean, it's, it's one of those, like if you have a consistent miss and even if it's developed this year, for instance, and it's like, I keep missing right or I, I keep missing left. I don't know what it is. It's probably, it, it, it could, it might just be not your swing. It might just be, I might need a new angle on my irons. I might just need a quick adjustment at second swing. And then we make that change for you and suddenly you're hitting the shots that you were hitting before. So it's something to think about, especially with irons, because you can see the big effect on that. And with drivers, obviously a lot of the modern ones, you can take that hosel and adjust it yourself. Mm -hmm. A lying adjustment with the irons probably requires you to come in a second swing and we can make that adjustment for you. But cool demonstration here today, Michael. It kind of worked out as we uh, somewhat expected a little bit. So um, thank you for hitting the shots today. Thanks for the demonstration. Um, and again, golfers, make sure you get that lie angle dialed in on your iron sets. It can make a big difference in your game. So thanks again, Michael. Happy to help.